going to do an Oath of the Gate Watch. Do we want to do a fast build? Yeah. What's fast build? It just means we have five minutes to build. Oh. No hustle up. All right, and let's go ahead and get both the gate watch and battle for Zendikar open for prices. Yep. And make sure it's on online. And right, it is. Should be should be about to kick off any second. Yep. And Gideon's have been on the upstream, which is kind of cool. That's pretty cool. All right, and we've got Cletus is here. All right. Oh, Demez. Um, basically, I have Ugin and those cards uh, are great time to sell them. If you have Eldrazi cards, now is the time to move them. The deck is very powerful, I mean, but... Unless it, you want to play the deck. If you want to play the deck, you can hold it. Um, hi, you know what we should probably pick? Uh, we should probably pick that... Is that a foil one? I can't tell. No, that's a regular Thought Not Seer. Let's go ahead and... Uh, that's real shiny. Nah, it's a regular. It's another ring. So we were saying the cards like Thought Not Seer are great cards to move. Um, I have Ugin is another great card to move. Uh, I have Ugin, I would actually move. Unless I was going to play the modern deck right now, I would move it... Opening it go back down. Yeah, it will. So we're going to start here with our Thought Knots here, which is pretty exciting. How much is that worth? The draft! We did it! Free draft! We're going to sell it as soon as we draft it. Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to be moving that. Oh, that almost never happens. True. We sell that Chandra to move, too. Oh, yeah. So that'll pay for two more of our drafts. Pretty much. I mean, we're ahead on drafts. Um, Goblin Dark Bullets has already gone down. I'm so sad I wasn't able to sell it at six. Yep. I tried for a while, and it's already down to three. I'm going to uh, give it a couple of Star Cities, because I expect it to get play. I think this is a modern, or not modern, I think it's a standard staple. Um, people have been trying out boom best lists with it in modern. Probably on the second by now. Which is fine. Let's go ahead and seconds. add it to our picks. All right, do we want to go in on that, or are we doing just draft? Just no, we're just going to draft normal thing. Colors isn't good enough to go in now. Eile, mm -hmm. my perspective picks are Eile and Blinding Drone. Um, I don't think Eile has any value. No, I'm pretty sure she doesn't. doesn't. But what she does have is she's extremely strong, and if we end up in this deck, she will be a definite playable card. Even if we can't use the other two abilities, uh, blue-black for a 2-3 death touch is amazing. The other card we consider is Blinding Drone. It's less powerful. It's strong, though. Um, if we do end up colorless, it does let us play our Thought Knots here. I don't think we'll run enough color sources to make me comfortable running it. So I'm edging towards Eilie. It's the kind of card that if we end up in the colors, the payoff's there. And I think the only other pickable cards are Blinding Drone and Tar Snare. And if I'm... I would always take Eile over Tar Snare. And I'm definitely thinking about taking Blinding Drone. No, I'm definitely on Eile. Just because it's so strong. Yeah, even if we don't get any support for it, then that's fine. Right. We just won't play it. And it's... Making picks like this, like early picks right here... Okay, so maybe we should be. Like, Thought Snare. Harvester's here. Tart Snare, Thought Harvester... So before, for me, it's also a crumbling visage. And we've got crawler. Two good blue cards: Thought Harvester and Prophet. Both are great cards. And Tarsnare. Tarsnare is worse than Thought Harvester on its own. And I like Containment Membrane, but you don't seem to like it too much. I like it. I just don't think it's quite as early and strong as a pick as these two uncommons. Tarsnare lets us play with our first pick a little bit. Um, blue may or may not be open. All of this means is that they took a good common that wasn't blue. And then uh, the rare. And the rare. So we know that the person two seats over is probably not playing blue. That's all we really know, which could be a reason to be in blue. But I also like the Tar Snare. It's a good piece of removal. I think for me it's Thought Harvester or Tar Snare. Would you rather have a solid flyer or okay removal to go with our first pick? It doesn't matter. All right. Just whichever one you want to go into. So we've got um, not a lot going here. So the, uh, the creature is pretty good if we're going black white. Yeah. Either one, actually. The Core Scythe Master, I think, is better than the Spawn Band Rage. Um, Sleep Away being here makes me think Blue might be open, but Core Scythe Master is also a fine pick. There's not really a lot going on in this pack. Yeah, it's hard to tell. So I also like the Devoid guy, the black Devoid guy. He's good. I, I would consider him. I think the power level of just cards here by themselves is probably Scythe Master, Sweep Away, Seer's Lantern, Kozilek's Translator, yeah. in that order. I mean, the Mage is pretty good, too. It's, it's all right. I think it's worse than the other ones. The yeah, only because you're tapping to it set one of theirs. And it's a four drop, yeah. This guy yeah. can get flying and stuff. Hopefully Black White's open. Um, just having the Eile makes me happy enough to yeah. kind of push forward into it. Let's go ahead and set our Thought Not Seer over here. We're unlikely to play it. Um, yep, as long as it pays for our draft, I'm happy with it. Yeah, drafting a $15 bill is well worth it. I'll always draft a $15 bill. Mm -hmm. It's rarely an option. Um, yeah, there's not many. We took Chandra. And Thought Not to use the kind of card we would play if we could end up a colorless. It's just hard to get enough colorless. Mm, is the Hissing Quagmire worth anything online? 
Probably not, because it made it this far. No. Um, so we could take Hissing Quagmire. It is a good land. Um, yeah. We probably should take an actual spell. So there's Searing Light. Those things tend to will a lot, though. And then there's the Zulaport Cut Mage. I want my first Chain Mage over my first chain mage. Searing Light. Um, I could also be convinced that I want a Stalking Drone, because that's a decent green card. There's no cards that stand out. Hissing Quagmire is the best card, followed by probably Stalking Drone... And then the Warden and the Chain Mage are about Let's equal. go with Chain Mage. I think we have, what, two allies? Is is Ilya an ally? Yeah, okay. So green also looks pretty open. Scion Summoner and Lead by Example are good cards. Um, yeah, green looks pretty open. Uh, so I like the... The drone. I like the drone because of the Death Touch, and I also like the Vigilance guy. So Cultivator Drone strong. Summon and oh, I like Summoner. the other drone better because we're trying to stay out of blue, I believe. Well, we're not in colorless either. I would rather have my first Alpha Protector than I like Slime. that the best for our deck. What, Alpha Protector? Yeah, just because it's an ally. It's, it's a an fine okay ally. creature, but yeah. it's mostly just... This is a pretty good pack, because Cultivator Drone... Yep. If we got this far, I didn't think. We could move course, into blue. Of course, we've we've taken a ton of blue cards before, and it just didn't get us there. Could have been bad draws or whatever. Um, Alright, so uh, I think we're going to take our Hedron. want the set... Second chain mage, so I would take the second sky climber over the second chain mage. I would we take. We don't the have a. Oh, we do have a sky climber. No, I, we have a sky master, psych master. Okay, well, I'm gonna take my first yeah, sky. That one's pretty well, good. Well, I don't like that guy. I do. He likes. He lets us play our later spells pretty quickly. He's yeah, just, but I'd rather be faster. He gets us to our bigger spells, but sure, we'll take the ally. Um, I could probably would have gone the other way, but it's it's close. All right, so there's nothing in this pack except for lead by example and visions of brutality. Let's go ahead and take yeah, this to our sideboard. Why yeah. not? If we end up aggressive, it'll be a good deck. Um, none of this works. You want to take the Chain Mage? We can take our second Chain Mage. Or do you want to take the Mana Fixer, the Settlement? Uh, I don't think we'll need the Mana Fixer. I don't think we're playing Colorless. So for me, it, sending Cinderella in this late next, but it makes me think Red's kind of open. But yeah, so I don't think we're going to play the Chain Mage. So I'd probably win the land. All right, I will take my first Translator. I did like that card. Um, so blue was open. Yep. Well, we're this, blue, this had three one. good blue cards, though. Yeah, we're not going to play either one, so... We could take the Strider. I'd rather have the Witness for the sideboard, though. Might as well just take the Rare. I don't think any of that other stuff's getting played. No, uh, this doesn't look too great, but some of the Synergy cards come later. So, we can run the Witness, and we can run the Visions if we need to. Mm. Um, I'm not excited about the Visions. We didn't see any premium black or white removal, so that's yeah. a big problem. There might well, not. It's really hot picks. So it, they are. They're almost always first picks. I'd like to be able to get one or two. If I had one or two premium removals and maybe another tar snare, I'd be pretty happy with our removal suite. Or some good uh, payoff cards for yeah. the uh, cohort ability. Yeah, you don't have dog as well. <laughs> yeah. The good news is we have the uh, sky climber, which I like a lot. But really, we just have sky climber and uh, tar snare. They're they're not really that impressive. Is oath worth anything? No. Hmm, I thought it was. Oath hmm. is not worth anything. Uh, it's a I good like pack. I think Hulk, but we're not really in that color. No. All right, so I could be convinced that we want Oath because it can be powerful with allies. And I do agree with that. It is powerful with allies. I like the wall, but I don't think it's actually that high a draft pick. It's definitely not first pick. So for me, it's between... The Wall, the Scythe Master, and the Oath. We don't have a good pick. Well, so I think I think the Oath is probably the best just because it makes two allies for three. That's not bad. Yeah, we have some cohort. and lets us push harder mm -hmm. into cohort. So let's see. I like the Flyer. I like the Vigilant Sky. All right, so we're rewarded. The person next to us didn't take Oblivion Strike because wow. it wasn't for them. Wow, that is way better than all the other picks. So we'll take Oblivion Strike. Um, we'll hope that either the Aeronaut or the Protector will. I think I would take my Hedron Crawler over the uh, Protector. Or the Aeronaut? No, I take the air not over the other one. Okay. I like the raptor. So our first raptor's nice. Um, uh, yep, I didn't like having two of. We ended up not playing one last time we drafted two of them. Yeah. Uh, well, no, we played both of them. I'll, I'll play all the raptors we get. They're fine. Um, mm -hmm. I like the air not a little bit better than the second. I do want. I do want an air not on the wheel. So. Okay. Um, what do we have here? Nothing. This looks like nothing. There's the. Flying Devoid guy. Yeah, we're not playing that. Let's go ahead and take Boulder Salvo and not play against Boulder Salvo. Mm, I don't think you should bother hate drafting. Do you see anything we're going to play? I mean, the settlement's not terrible. 
We're not splashing another color. You're not even splashing for the thought knots here? No. No, that's a bad splash, in my opinion. We would have to have more than just one color card. There's not that many good colors activation cards in black and white. There's none in white. Well, we could take a waste at some point. They seem to go pretty light. But they just make our deck worse. Like, I don't think we should run Thought Knots here. Okay. Like, that's where I'm at, is I don't want to run Thought Knots here because I don't think that I want to run off-color cards. And that's an off-color card. Well, it's it's also just a bad mana fixing, which is better than no mana fixing. Well, it might be better just to run another Planes or Swap in that swap because you have to tap a creature for it. Could be. Um, um so let's see... Wow, look how Not impressed with anything. Uh, the Mighty damage. Leap is actually pretty good combat trick, so I'd be okay with playing that. I was thinking about taking our first Seer's Lantern, because I don't mind it in the uh, decks that are run a little bit slower with Cohort, make our draws better. But I could go Mighty Leap or Seer's Lantern. I think I want a better combat trick than Mighty Leap. I think I'd like to have my first Seer's Lantern over my first combat trick I don't want to play. I didn't realize Seer's Lanterns would, would be worth playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Scry is, is nice. Mm. Let's see. All right, so I think I'm on, and we could take Meandering River in case we actually want to splash blue because it's Let's free -ish. money. It's not. Um, Kozilix Shrieker's fine as a three mana three two that we don't want to uh, play. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, we don't want to play, and it's we a have three a, two for three. Well, we have a lot of three drops already, but sure. Yeah, we do need some big cards, but we'll probably get them in the last pack. All right. Um, blue is super hot. Okay, let's go ahead and take our Tarsen here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Now, I would take the Unnatural Endurance if we had uh, not over the mm, Searing Light. We might get it. No, we probably won't get it on the wheel. That's okay. I, I'd rather have just more... We might okay. get another one, though. Um, uh, nope. Okay. So we yeah, can take I mean, Dazzler Reflection. not terrible. Dazzler Reflection's not terrible. Sure. We'll move that to our sideboard. I don't mind the Warden. I'd rather play the Warden over the Chain Mage, but that's just me. Well, so more allies might be better. Yeah. I don't but think we already have two chain mages, so... Yeah, there, there might be a matchup where things are very slow, and um, multiple chain mages do a lot of work for us. So, giving a creature menace is probably not worth it. Yeah, let's just go ahead and not play against Stalking Drone. That's not the kind of card I want to play against. Eh, all that stuff is All right, pretty so bad. green is super open. Saddleback like X should not be this yeah, I don't know what people are in, unless they're in our colors. Um... Yeah, that's a late saddle. Maybe this pack... These people don't know that Saddleback Legax like the best green common. I think it's the best green common. Is that the one that support two? It's yeah, support two three, for three one. one. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a single better green common than that one. Um. Uh. Play this. Yeah, we might play corpse turn. I don't think so. Depends on what. Well, there's not really anything else to get. I would have taken the green card. The green card in case we end up in green with our... No, no, no. Just so nobody plays it against us. Oh, no one's already playing green. We know, because they're passing a Saddleback Legax. One, one person is. That person's getting a lot of good green cards. Yep. That person's going to win. Eh, they might not. Mm, well, well, we won't know unless we beat them. Or we see them round one. Yeah! All right, let's take a second witness then. Whatever. I would take the land over that guy. That's a decent card. I don't want to really want to see a 4-4 four, four trample. They're, they're not nice guys to stare down. All right. I mean, black looks like it's kind of open. I think white is the car color we shouldn't have been. I think we should have been in black green. We got a good we got good white cards though. That's true. The white cards we do have are pretty decent. Um, I want more two drops. I just want to open a money card for this last pack. We if we just open a Gideon, we'll be fine. You you always want money cards. Yeah. Brad's always like, if we could just open a string of money cards. Yeah, I mean, we really don't need to win if we just play for free. So we will win some amount of games. The other day we played with an eighty card deck, and I was able to uh, go two one. Okay, uh, endless well, one. endless one's probably worth money. It's also a really good pick. It is. Um, uh, let's see if there's actually a pick better than endless one. We're gonna pick endless one, by the way. Uh, reserve. I uh, think is that it, how much money is it worth online? It's like six bucks. Mm, nice. Um, actually, this would be my pick. And if Endless One wasn't here, I think I'd be picking Sludge Crawler or Hedron Archive. Only because our deck's so low, I would mm. consider the Hedron Archive. Right, let's add another picture. Yeah, I mean, the Castigators, I think it's called, is, is pretty good, too. Um, Endless mm. One. Do you see it? No, actually. Ah, not worth anything online for some reason. That's fine. I'm so happy playing it. All right. So we need to count to see if Rising Miasma is a card that's playable. What about the Overs Overseer? The Overseer is not very good. That's a 
It's a 3-4 flying for 6. That's not a very good card. That gets bigger when we play lands, or everything gets bigger? Other creatures, it doesn't get bigger. Oh. It's the worst of that cycle, probably. Yeah, I'm What about the Flying Vigilance guy? I was looking at the Flying Vigilance guy. Let's look and see if Mighty Miasma is bad for our deck. Mm, it's pretty bad for our deck. 1, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, about half of our cards live, so that's not very good. Okay, so for me, it's Ghostly Sentinel... Or the Overseer. The Overseer is better if we have more creatures, but we only have 10 creatures. We don't have a ton of creatures. Well, we will by the end. Would you rather have the Overseer? I think I'd rather have the Sentinel, but it's close. Uh, well, so that one's 5 and that one's 6, but that one's a 3-4 with abilities. We'll try it. I might have gone with the 5, but... Okay, here we go. Um, we could take the Shear Drop. We could take the Channeler, but I think I'd rather have the Flyers. The Channeler's just so good, though. I mean, how good is it in our deck? We only got one card that's bigger than it. So it you don't like the destroy football. target creature? I really like the destroy target attack creature. Um, would you rather have the channeler or the sheer drop? Mm, probably the channeler, actually. So we're gonna have we're gonna have three five drops. Is that too many? We can drop one, but I. Uh, I mean, I'd I'd be fine playing both those five drops. I'd be fine playing that Corey Griffin too, though. I mean, whatever you want to get out of those three. It, it's, see, I'm not sure if that was... Yeah, see, there's our second Shear Up. Shear Up's just lost a little bit of value oh, for really? me. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Now, we could take McKinney Patrol and have another good three drop. I think I'd rather have another Shear Drop. We might just be a really controlling deck. We have... Ally creatures you control gain Vigilance until in turn. That's actually pretty good for our deck. It's all right. I'd rather have the Shear Drop. I like Shear Drop. All right, so this is an interesting pick. We've got Inspire Charge, Andy Rising, Sludge Crawler. I think the landfall guy is pretty powerful, isn't he? Nah, I just don't want another four drop. I think I'm actually going to run three Zulaport chain mages at this point, and this be really slow and chain mage them to death. So for me, it's Andi Rising or Sludge Crawler. Uh, we can pick a powerful one drop. That's fine. That doesn't really have a lot of synergy with our other ingest stuff, which is whatever. Or we can get a card that can get us a lot of life if we need to gain a lot of life for whatever reason. So you don't think the landfall for Striker is good? I don't want to run another four drop. Okay. So uh, either one's fine. Let's take our. F oh. I mean, Sludge Crawler is probably the better one. We don't need any more tricks. That's true. All um, right. Um, Grave Birthing. In case we just want to cycle a card, Angelic Gift. I really don't like high risk cards. Do we really have anything that Angelic Gift goes great on? Other than a couple well, of four it replaces powers? itself, so it's not very high risk. Yeah. So does Grave Birthing. Huh. Either one's fine then. So flying is just so powerful in this set. Sure. Well, well, that's a good point, actually. All right, here we go. I'm happy with this. Black black is coming around pretty well. If it wasn't for this sharpshooter, I'd probably take the rampart. But being an ally is good, and being able to have an activated ability late is good. Yep. All right. We have way too many three drops. That's a whole lot of three drops. Like, that doesn't usually happen. Well, the good news is four of those three drops are removable. Yeah. Um, Which means they're not really three drops. Um, right. I like the ingest guy. Do you rather have the 2-2 two -two I like the flyer better. All right. I hate that we got another 3-drop, but that one's a pretty good one. Yeah, we only have one 2-drop. Um, Let's go ahead and take Mortuary Mire. Probably not play it. We might, though. Who knows? It's, I like picking lands, especially when there's nothing else that's like... We have a lot of flying, and we have a lot of allies, so I like this. I like that we have a decent amount of bad removal to go with it, too. Um. So... We can take the uh, Mind Breaker. It's better than everything else. Well, also, we can board it in against the people that we need to have a lot of. Hey, that's exactly what I was looking for. Against no the problem. really slow decks. Um, uh, sacrifice another creature, put two counters on this guy. Oh, that's so weird. Sorcerer. You can't stop. Mm. We're not going to play any of these spells. So. Nope. Taking, taking my rares. Taking my rares. Uh... Well, so between Endless One... Oh, not being worth anything on... Oh, wow, that came around. It's just not a very good card. It, it's better now that the format's slower. But, uh... Okay. So, I'm not excited about this deck, but at the same time, it's not super terrible. I've seen worse. Because I've played Mirrodin. <laughs> Alright, remember we only have five minutes, so when we get to a minute, I'm going to tell you, and then... When yep. we get to 30 seconds, we're going to go ahead and hit Smith. For sure. Okay. Well, well, there's not too much to talk about for cuts and wise. We don't have a lot of interesting 
decisions to make. Yeah, we pretty much have to just cut two cords and play it, right? Yeah, I do think green was the next most open color. Um, we weren't in green, so it would be a little bit more open if we were in green. But there was one, two, three green cards that I was happy to get that I think went, late, went later than they should. We took the Boulder Salvo because there's nothing else to pick, so I wouldn't count that for red. And just one Cinderellian could have been a pretty stacked pack. Yep. The the Mire, you think we'll play it? Um, we'll have to look at our creatures and see if there's any creatures we really want to get back. Right now, I think Expedition, Raptor, and Endless One are the only cards I'd be excited to get back. Uh, but the rest of them... Seems like it'd be worth it, then. If we don't get the ability, we don't get the ability. Yeah, with the number of I three mean, getting drops. back anything off the land is probably good, right? Or do uh, you have to draw? It goes back on top of your mm, deck. It's, it, it's an increase in card quality at the cost of speed. Let's make sure there's no more black cards we want to play. Nope. No. We have a decent sideboard. Mindraker and the Witness of the Ends are good against the really, really slow decks. Because they're two for ones. Yep. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and set our non-creatures down at the bottom. Angelic Gift looks like my first probable cut. I just don't like having cards that... I don't like having auras, if I can avoid it. Well, so that one replaces itself, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, that's a creature. Oh, those are actually creatures and spells. I like that. Both... Oh, the sheer drops, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this at uh, two, because it's more likely to place it. What? No. <laughs> We're never going to play that at two. Uh, it's like a three or four. It's just where it's in your hand. Like if I'll always play it where it fits in my curve. So, oh, if I had so hand, I'll actually, I'll actually try to avoid playing it for as long as possible. Like for a head on board, I don't see any reason to play it. It's true. Um, so. All right, so we've got. A uh, so we need we need two cuts, but we have a pretty, pretty quick deck with having this many three drops. All right, so these are the we'll cuts go wide like. pretty quickly. Uh, so I like the landfall guy just because it gets through on a solid board. Okay, would you rather cut this guy? Uh, and it's not like he gets through easily on a solid board. As long as we have a land. All they have to have is a 5-5. Five, five. There's a lot of those hanging around. 5-5 five, five on turn 5, though? They're not going to have that. 5-5 five, five on turn 6? Not going to have that. 5-5 five, five on turn 7? They're going to have that. Yeah... Would you... Okay, so for me, I, I definitely want to cut Angelic Gift at this point. Okay, cut it. I think that... See, that breaks board stalls is the reason I'd want to keep it. All right, so then... So so Sears Lantern is probably what I'd cut, because we don't have very much top end. We have a reasonable amount of top end. I like it more for the... For the, uh, for the scry. I just don't think we're that slow. All right, so are there any... Do we want... Three Chain Mages? Because I don't want three Chain Mages. So I'm looking at a deck that's going to play a lot of very defensive ground game. Like, we have a lot of very defensive ground game cards. Sky Master's an attacking card. But a lot of these are slower cards that you just cohort a lot with. Okay, so so we're just going to sit there and cohort until we win? Because I agree with that. Yeah. In that case, we should cut the Landfall guy. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. All right, so we need one more cut and then lands. Right, so for me, I would like to cut Angelic Gift. Let's count the cards we'd like to have Angelic Gift on. Sludge uh, Crawler, Endless One. The 4-2. Chain Mage. And the uh, 3-5, that's it. It's not even exciting on 3-5. Uh, the 3-1, the though, I'm not I'm not sad about putting it on that. Yeah. The, like when are we, it trades okay. with every flyer. When are we playing this if we draw it in curve? We're going to play at the end of the curve, right? Like, there's no When do we play it time-wise, other than off the top of the deck late? Uh, when we're not playing anything relevant. Aren't we playing or, Well, so so we're not playing anything relevant a lot, or to break a board stall. Alright, so then let's look at when it's not relevant. When we'd rather play Angelic Gift over some of these other... I'd rather play Angelic Gift over Kozilix Shrieker moderately often. Same for the Scythe Master. The rest of these cards I'd rather play over the Angelic... Oh, and I'd rather play it over Gideon, so that's three. Yeah, I don't really like Oath, but since we have so many allies... Yeah, okay, let's just cut Angelic Gift and put lands in it. We're getting close to a minute. Yeah. Because if we cut that, we don't have to We don't have to do anything else. Let's take one more quick look. I don't really like Sludge Crawler, but it can get okay. Yeah, and, and you know, people respect it a lot more. And we can do stuff like play as well with the Tar Snares, and I like that. It plays well with the Seer's Lantern. Yep. Okay, so do we want to run Mortuary Mire? Yeah, I think we do. Okay. Why not? So we're running uh, eight, eight, eight. eight seems fun. It seems fine to me too. Uh, we do have a little more black than white, right? 
just slightly, just the double black card that cares about swamps. So it's perfect. All right, let's submit and see how the ring goes on the first one. Um, this is a slower deck. We do have fast starts. You know, we can play like Sludge Crawler and do an Eily into one of our three power cards and do a four power card. But what I really like is our aggressive attacking can then slow down into Chain Mages. Like imagine that the board isn't better for them and we have a Chain Mage or two out. Or we play a Chain Mage. They have to kill the Chain Mage. It might not be the hardest card to kill, but they're having to use removal spells. And we have three of them. That's a lot of Chain Mages. Um, I'll be interested to see if we can use Eily's ability. Probably not, but like maybe we can do something cool like pump up Sludge Crawler and sacrifice well, so, it. So we can start generating 2-2 two, two tokens and sacking them. Oh no, that's the one that drains people. What's the one that makes 2-2 two, two tokens? I always get those two confused. It's a rare. It's a 4 for a 2-2. Two, two. Ah, that guy's way better than that. That's why it's a rare, not a common. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to have that. That's uh, one of the... That's, that's what I always think that guy is. Yeah, we passed one at one point. Not this draft. Uh, a different draft. I wouldn't have passed it. Well, we weren't playing black, I don't think, right? No. We were, like, heavily in blue that draft, right? Yeah, and we've had it in a sealed as well, but we just weren't playing that there either. All right, so ideally we're just looking at a hand that has one removal spell and some creatures. This is fine. Mm, yep. All right, so I think we just start with the Moisture Mary Meyer, so we have availability to play the rest of our cards. Uh, yep. It's unfortunate. Well, it's fine to play these cards early, and it's late, it's an option. And one of the things I like about having these effect lands with a lower ish curve, we don't have a super low curve, but without having a ton of high drops, means that when you draw them later, they're less impactful. You're not waiting for that seventh land, right? So is this uh, this core cleric, is he also an ally? Nope, he's just a core cleric. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, we're going to play him on turn two and start tapping him for life later, which he helps with eye if we need to. Yeah, we'll attack while we can with him. We're probably just going to try to curve out here. Yeah, and the good news is that they solved the board. Um, the Chain Mage does good work late. The Sharpshooter does good work late. Like, we have a bunch of cards that are okay attackers and really good in board stalls. Yeah, I mean, I'd much rather turn the Chain Mage sideways. Yeah, me too. But we might not have that option. Nope. Definitely not. Uh, so you want to play the 3-2? Definitely. Because it's bigger. And we'd rather the Sharpshooter be alive later. That's another reason. Um, it being able to get flying means I will trade with my opponent's flyers. Yeah, just don't click through the the in, the in phase. Yeah, just just don't F six. Um, my opponent should uh, definitely not block. Mm, I think they might be double cube. It's a possibility. All right, I'm going F six. Now we've got a pretty good board. They can play something relevant, and if they do, we can jump this and play a sludge crawler. Or we can play the Chain Mage. Mm. I think I actually like playing the Chain Mage. I actually just like attacking, yeah. Wait, playing? you like me jumping this in a... No, not jumping. Just turn it sideways. They trade with it. They trade with it. My creature's way better than their creature. Your 3-2 is way better than their 2-2? Two -two? Yeah, especially since they only have two allies. And I want to keep using my allies with the Chain Mage. Oh, but if you attack with both of them, that seems better. You'll take one and trade? Well, so they would trade, and then you'd play a 4-2 and attack with a 4-2. Of course, next turn, you can uh, you can support 2 and support onto the 4-2 and the 3-2, and then you can attack. So yeah. that's a better play. And let's see, the following turn, you just play out your hand, I suppose. Um, Yeah, depends on what we draw, what we don't draw. No point in not playing out your hand. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of... If you don't draw anything relevant. They missed a land drop, so that might have been an mm -hmm. argument for an attack. That's unfortunate. So, yeah, I actually think... That you're going to outclass them very quickly. Yeah, if we draw a land, we have a great play. If we don't draw a land, oh, we I have a good play. I didn't notice you didn't have a play. We have the Sharpshooter and the Sludge Caller, if nothing else, if we don't want to yeah. attack. Um, well, our actually, land really opens us up to start wrecking them. Yeah. I think that um, this turn, if they um, don't play anything significant, I actually will probably jump and attack. Nope, never mind. Our option to jump is gone. Alright, support and then attack? They can double block. Yeah, we don't really get a good trade if they double block. 
No. We actually, yeah, we do actually. We get to kill their two four, and then we have a three four and some flying creatures. So you're right. Actually, that's a great attack. I mean, you could always support onto the one three instead of the three two because the three two can jump, and then just attack with a four two and a two four. They have a two four flyer, so that's not a good plan. Then. Yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna make these three threes and attack with both. If they trade, then we'll kill the thought harvester, and then we have a two two flying, and probably and a jump creature. No, they probably leave us the zoo port cutthroat just because they have to have a string of flying creatures. Oh, you don't think they'll double block the cutthroat? I think they'll double block the, ki the Sky Climber. We don't have another ally. This is, these uh, are we only just two. have one in our hand. Yeah, so. but they don't know that. Well, they are thinking hard. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what they block. Right, we're just going to kill the 2-4. Yeah. And, I mean, the 2-4s are a great card. It's a good card to kill. Um, yep. And then once we get... Next turn, we'll, unless we draw something more relevant, we'll play both of our creatures, and then we'll have the ability to start shooting stuff off. There is an argument to be made for playing the Hagrid Sharpshooter and trying to kill the uh, Hedron Crawler while they're down on mana. I think just pushing it through. I do, too. Because they could draw a string of lands more likely than they would draw a string of relevant cards to stop multiple flyers. Yep. Not to mention, next turn we get to play it, and then the following turn start eating stuff. So. Alright, so you just click the two creatures. There yep. You go. And then we go to combat, and we're going to attack for eight, nine, sorry. You're going to go ahead and swing the one three because it won't die unless they double block it? Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, it's just a free point of damage. Um, blocking the one three is the worst block by far. Oh, yes. Unless you really, really like to kill it. I would probably kill the jumping one, um, just because if you don't, I kill the Thought Harvester, and then I'm attacking for six flying every turn. Well, so if they do kill the jumping one... Then you're still attacking with a five three. They can't kill from then on, which will kill them. Well, if they can play one even card faster, there. they have cards in hand. If they play a land, they can probably play a creature with three power, or with one power because the Scion Summoner. Now, what they don't know is that we're not going to attack with the five three. Next turn, we'll play the Hogger Sharpshooter, the Sludge Caller, and attack for two. Yeah, hmm, they are doing that. So you want to kill the other one? Yep. All right, and if they don't have a significant creature this turn, oh, there we go. They got a land, so they're they're doing okay now. Maybe. So they can play four drop. There's a lot of relevant four drops. If it doesn't have flying, then we'll be able to get through two damage for sure. Hmm. Okay. Well, they're not blocking with it. They're trying to show us some sort of combat trick. Oh, uh, well, no. We know that we're not going to trade, so... We're not going to trade our flyer for their 2-2 jump creature. Okay. Uh, so if you play the lantern and then the sharpshooter, you get both of the plays. Or the sl I I'd play the sledge crawler. No, no. Play the sharpshooter and the lantern. It's more mana. Yeah, but this is another must block ability creature. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead and play them both like that, but you should attack first, shouldn't you? With a 5-3? That's true. And the 2-2 two -two flyer. You'd rather just trade the 5-3? Why wouldn't we? We can drain them to death. We can do 4 damage a turn by draining. Tapping. 4 40. damage a turn? 2 life, 2 flying. Um. Okay, maybe your way is better. I think that's the safer play. Are we going to do it while taking four from there in this one? Sure, we're way ahead. Okay. And then, are we going to attack with the Sludge Crawler as well? Because we can pump it enough times. One, two, three. We can, and we will, starting next turn. So we'll play the Hogger Sharpshooter and the Seer's Lantern to give us access to doing all that. And it's better if we draw a land next turn, so I actually like your play quite a bit because of that. Well, then we can't attack with it next turn. That's fine. Oh, uh, you should have kept a black mana open. Oh, never mind. You're playing both of this. Yeah. All right, so now we can cohort. Or we can block and cohort if we want to. Um, if they attack with the 4-4. I think, I think blocking is a bad plan, because we're going to win 
by not blocking. Because they're at 11 and we're at 18. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I also like the cohort in case they play a flying creature. There's plenty of creatures that have more than two toughness. Not that it makes it easy. We have the sharpshooter. The sharpshooter also um, lets us, if they have a two power creature, we can attack with our 2 2 and yep. trade it off. Um, I actually might just play the sledge crawler and kill their mana source. I actually probably will do that next turn. That seems reasonable. So what could they play that would be significant? If they play a land... 2-4 mm, flyer, like they've already played. Clutch of Cornets. Let's go ahead and mm. activate that. Choose target opponent. Tap an ally. It's fine. Yeah, we don't really care that much. He's still tradable with it. 4-4. Four, four. And he's not going to slow us down a turn unless we show something awesome. And our opponent should attack. That's a risky well, attack. Because we can now attack with our creature into theirs. And just eat it. Yeah. Unless they have other play. They have jump blockers. Um, 5-3 is attractive. Uh, playing the... Chain Mage is attractive. Uh, just attacking with all three creatures is attractive. We attack with all three creatures. That's one, two, three, four, five. They won't let us get all three that four. Yeah, but they'll just let it, they'll just jump off. And then we eat whatever would kill one of our things. And then we don't play anything. Minus ability. Uh, it may not be the best play, but it might keep their creature back. They'll probably just block here and then take three and go to six. Well, then we minus it and we get a free card. Right. And we still get to play the Sludge Crawler. Yeah, okay. There's no combat this, tricks or colors that matter. This, well, there's no, yeah, there's no combat tricks. Well, no. There's Warping no well doesn't matter. Tricks. Yeah. There are some that they could play, but none that matter. It's interesting they didn't make a better colorless combat trick, like an uncommon one that was really good. Uh, I think they oh, that's not worried. true. They have the plus three, minus three. All right, so we just do the thing, leave a black man open. Oh, see, they know. Well, you should yeah. still go... You should still do the... No, you shouldn't even bother doing the minus. You should just play a better creature now. I should play my 3-5. Now, we can get rid of their mana sources and put them at four mana sources. But you think we should just do this? Since they're willing to block like that, knowing that you can kill both of those, I think it's better that you just kill their 2-2. Yeah. And then play a better creature. All right, so we're going to play the translator. Now that... Or the cut. Or the... Yeah, translator's best. And, and the other thing. Yeah, and the Sludge Crawler. Which makes them not be able to attack with a 4-4. Four, four. Correct. Alright, so now we don't have a way to really put a lot of pressure on our opponent other than the 2 damage. But we do have 6 mana, so we can make this a 3-3. Three, three, or 4-4, four, four, sorry. Well, and, and in addition to that, they're at 6. So right. very few cards would pull them out of this fast enough. Uh, almost all of them have to have fly. Right. We could have also kept this sharpshooter back, played the chain mage, and tried to... Uh, so we really want up. to draw an ally, though, so that we could just cohort them to death. Yeah, and that's the argument for not attacking with the sharpshooter. Mm. And the sharpshooter's a better card than the science owner. That's true. That's true. Or we're not really adding any mana. If we draw a land, we can pump up the Sludge Caller one more time because of the uh, translator. So that's always nice, being able to make it a 5-5 five, five and just completely outclass the endless one. That just removal spell? Yeah, it gave 1-1 one, one counters to creatures. Huh. And those creatures deal damage to something? Yeah, all creatures with 1-1 one, one counters deal damage to something. All right, so we take 5. Um, yeah. All right. Cheer drop. Uh, Cast with Waken. Yeah. Uh, land Waken with two planes. planes. Do we have six mana, so. Yeah, okay. Alright, and we attack with our. All three, right? Oh no, they get a free block, so just the three five and the one. No, just the three, three five. five. Yeah. <laughs> nice! No mana means Sludge Crawler doesn't do too much. Alright, so we should have attacked first. 
Uh, yes. You know what? We really made a mistake. We should have used the one man off the Kozlik's translator. I missed that. And then we would have been able to attack with the 3-3. Ah, three, three. that would have been much better, yeah. Yeah. What? Why didn't it... Oh, okay. It's right there. Yeah, that was a really bad That was play. That was terrible. Oh, uh, well. That would have made a really big difference. Hope we don't lose because of that. Um, our opponent doesn't really have a lot of mana. Yeah, but that would have put him at, like, almost dead. That's true. They wouldn't have had hardly any options. That said, I do think swinging out next turn represents lethal in most situations. Okay. Just a random 3-5. That's good enough. Um, I think we should play Chain Mage. And we can use Seer's Lantern if we want to. So... One, two, three. We can only make that a 4-4. Four, four. We can attack with both of these and make this a 4-4. Four, four. One, two... Yeah. You want to attack both of these make this a 4-4? Four, four. Chump block, chump block? Or do you want to play the Chain Mage and well, then so the Chain got, Mage? They've got a 3-5, right? Yeah, they put their 3-5 on our 3-5 and then our... Oh, they put our 4-4 four, four on their 4-4 four, four, and they chump block the 3-5. Either one, they, they do a chump block. But I think we're better off using our mana for a Chain Mage. Okay. So then 1, 2, 3. So we should Chain Mage and Scry. Yeah. Or do we just want to gain life so they can't just kill us? Uh, we'll just either one. We'll we'll, we'll decide at the end of the turn. Well, we we can't if we're gonna do it the other way because you have to do one. But the way the reason I like this better is that um, okay. we're unlikely to play any card other than a chain mage. Like, what cards okay, would we so play? You could have you could have tapped the planes, right? I could have paid one life and tapped the planes. I mean, you could have just tapped the planes. And that way you could. You could pay a life and scry, or you can gain a life. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather gain a life right now. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying you could have kept more options open by not leaving up double planes. By just tapping that planes and leaving the lantern. Oh, we could have paid a life and scry. Yeah. Yeah, because you can you can use your planes that is a creature to gain life. Right. Right, instead of it being a blocker. I was thinking about it being a blocker. Because if they get rid of like one of our creatures, then having a 3-3 three, three is nice to block their 2-2. Two, two. But that's a good point. It's another option that I was considering as well. Mmm, nice. That 5-5 five five is going to be a lot. Yeah, it's okay. They're, they're dead in three turns. And if we draw a, cheap, a cheaper cohort, which we're not going to... I would tap that. Yeah. All right. So now we can... So now it's interesting because we can block and use the Kazula Port Cutthroat, or we can save our Zula Port Cutthroats to represent... Um, if we draw another ally that costs two, we can just win next turn. Yeah. So let's just pass, right? Yeah, we're going to pass here. We have to decide if we want to block with one of our two Zula Port Cutthroats. We can block and cohort to kill one of their creatures... Um, the other option is we keep the Zulu Port Cutthroat because next turn if we draw a two mana ally, they'll be at four and we can double cohort. So, the so game. they're gonna swing with the five five, you think? Yeah, I think they're incentivized so to swing with five five. If they swing with the five five, we block with a planes and a five three. They, they can prevent us from blocking with one of the creatures. That's its ability. He can pay a colorless to stop us from blocking with our best creatures. Oh, okay. Do we have a five three? You are 3-5. Three, 3-5, five. Three, five. yeah. yeah okay, we can always jump block. Yeah, I think we'll probably end up jump blocking. Because he can only stop two of them, so we've got two cards I don't care to jump. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that 3-5, I would uh, just block their 3-5. So you don't want to kill the 5-5 five, five with our 3-3 three, three and our 3-5? Oh, they're not even using their ability? No, they might have a combat trick. Um... We might as well we might as well take the three and kill the five. They might have a combat trick, but it's not gonna keep them from losing. So do you wanna put another creature on in case they give it plus two plus two? Nope. They can only kill one of the creatures. So we could just block the Stonehaven medic. Actually, I actually like that quite a bit. Oh, okay. Just uh be sure to use its ability right now. 
by tapping that? Yeah, after we get priority. Yeah. We should get priority after they assign damage. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we have a stop four damage. You might as well just gain the life because you don't need the creature to tap. And right. it may die. It probably won't. No, they'll probably kill these two. I would kill If they have a combat trick. If they don't, they'll probably just kill that guy. Which is fine. This is a good trade for us. Yeah, and we only take two damage, so. And then they lose two life at the end of the turn, so don't forget to do that. Yep, it's a three point life swing. And we have many allies to draw. The one thing I don't like about this dying is if we draw a three costed ally, it's no longer an out. But that's fine. Oh, it's not longer an instant win? Yeah. I love tapping a plains creature to gain us a life. That's just amusing. Let's see what they're playing here. This is interesting. Mm, make not, some more creatures. Okay. Yeah, not good enough. Unless they have some sort of... Alright. Pop spell. All right. You lose two life. J-Mage is doing good work. Yep. They're really good in board cells. Okay, our opponent gave up. I All think right. that was a little premature. Alright, so their deck is... Slowish. Yeah. Do we want to bring in things like Witness the End? Mmm... What does that one do again? Target Exiles opponent. two cards out of their hand. Hmm, maybe at least one of them. Okay, what do you even rather not play? Uh, man, I wish we'd have gained some cheaper allies, because drawing those three and nothing else was rough. We have some three-drop allies, but we only have one two-drop ally. Uh, it's unfortunate we get more two-drop allies. We just didn't see them. Wait, is this is a Pilgrim done No. Oh, hmm, annoying. Um... Yeah, really, I don't see anything I want to take out. I mean, maybe the Sludge Crawler's not that great, but we could always threaten with it. Yeah. I, they yeah. had a really bad hand, so I think we're, we're good running it back. I'll be right back. Don't lose. All right. I only win when Brad's not. <laughs> so, the hand we had was pretty good, and the game kind of sold out. I don't think we were particularly close to dead. We had a lot of resources left. Um, this hand looks good. Alright. Um, with this hand, I could be convinced to keep the Mortuary Wire, just because we can play Endless one more than once. Oh, they're having us play first. But I think I'm actually going to start with the Mire. And then turn two, play the Pilgrim, keep up the snare, just slow the game down. There was a pretty decent argument for keeping the Mortuary Mire just because we had two really good creatures. But now we have one creature that's almost impossible to attack through and only really good removal can get rid of it. Oh, they've got the Ruins. That's a very powerful card. The good news is we have two Shear Drops and a Tar Snare, and I'll be happy to use that um, on any of their cards. I'll use the Tar Snare a little bit more aggressively than normal just because Ruins of Order Reef can outclass it pretty quick. So we'll see what they go with here. Most of the two drops aren't going to block well into, yeah, at least just better than most of the other two drops. All right. But I don't think trading damage is advantageous to us with this kind of hand. So I think I'll hold and we'll tar snare the salvage drone if they attack. So yeah, Tarsney are quickly losing value against uh, Runes of Ordinary to turn their meaningless creature into quite a big one. But then the good news is Eilie plus the combat trick can be quite potent. So there's always that big advantage to it. Mm. All right, their Titan is presencing, revealing Birthing Hulk, which is quite large. So our Eilie is gone. Nice. Now they're going to attack, and we're going to kill it with the Tarsnare. Snare. All right. And Ruins of Warren Reef turned a card that I probably wouldn't have done anything to, to a card that was quite good for them. All right, 
So we can play a 4-4 Endless One, or we can just wait behind some Shear Drops. Um, that's probably one of their best removal spells, Titan's Presence, but I think it's worth using against a card like Eilie. All right, we'll now have a play. So. Makes two one one allies. Yep. And that's it. That's all we need. Uh, the sheer drops are quite nice. Having two of them means that we can really drag this game out. We are going to need something proactive at some point. But our deck has a lot of kind of stall breaking cards. Um, one thing I don't like is that Birthing Hulk can regenerate. And it can regenerate through sheer drops. Nice. It costs seven, so it's it's gonna take a while to get it out. I mean, there's always a chance that our endless one could just end up bigger than a birthing hulk. Yeah, if we draw nothing but land next turn, I'm pretty sure we just play endless one because there's nothing else to play. Hopefully, we'll draw something that's that lets our endless one be bigger later. But pushing on the board next turn, if we don't draw anything, is the best thing. Plus five five is respectable. Yeah, I mean. There's a slight argument for it a 6, but the real thing is the Birthing Hulk's being coming in is a 6-5, probably. I don't know. I probably wouldn't wait a turn on Birthing Hulk. I'd probably just take the 5-4. That's good Yeah, enough. we might want to try to wait till 6 for Endless One just because of that. That's three we turns might get away. lucky. They might tap out, not really thinking about keeping the regen up, and then we might get them. Okay, so now they're a, a mana. Yeah, so one more turn, like you throw it down. And we got a 3-4. Yeah. Oh, man, it's it'd be real tempting not to uh, go ahead and play the endless one here. I want them to swing. I want to kill their cultivator drone. Uh, a three four is worth killing with a sheer drop, and yeah. them not being able to. Uh, you know, I'd be okay with us drawing another land just so we can awaken. Me too. Land would be a great draw. Uh, so now they'll play, probably just play the Hulk, correct? Right? They don't have enough mana. Oh, do they have to play a colorless spell? Because that's a colorless spell. They have to have seven. Oh, it's seven. Yeah. That is a six right there. That's real tiny on my screen. Brad needs better glasses. Not really. The the client needs to not suck. <laughs> I can make it bigger. Watch. Grow. Oh, it doesn't get any nah, bigger than that. It's as big as it gets. Huh. Yeah, I don't understand how people can sit here and play this game. Like They have better eyesight than you, Brad. Uh, so my monitor is quite big, and I don't have poor Tiny outside. birthing pod. Di sorry, birthing hole. Birthing pod would please, be... Please stop what you're doing. Birthing pod wouldn't be that good. It actually wasn't a very good draft card. It was too hard to get value out of it. Mm, yep, seems right. All right, so we're just waiting our opponent to play a profit, which is going to make our long game plan much worse. Yep. And they're going to make it bigger. If I was them, I'd attack with my 3-4. Unless they highly valued the 3-4, in which case I would not attack with my 3-4. Nope, they're playing a spell. Ooh. Playing Heat Drawn Eye Give. Alright, that's going to be a problem. So they're going to win the game by grinding us out. We need to draw some flyers. Alright, so we can sheer drop with Awaken right now. Yeah. Cancel okay, so Awaken on this. Uh, sure. Doesn't matter. All right, so they will never tap Profit of Distortion. It will just draw them one to two cards a turn, which is really good. All right, so next turn, they could play the Birthing Hole, or they could wait a turn and hope that they get a thing. One, two, three, four, a five, line. six, seven. Yeah, they can play it now. I probably would. Well, so if they do, and we draw... Oh, it doesn't matter what we draw. We can make an endless one that is bigger than it. Yes. So. But they could also just wait if they want to have a 6-7 or 6-4. In which six, case, five. we need to draw another land and then play an endless one. Yeah. So if we draw a land next turn, I'm definitely in on the endless one. Yes. Um, it's hard to answer 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, there's not too many cards that can do it permanently for them. Uh, just big Eldrazi, which they're probably playing. And the support two card, or the support kill a card card would work. Yeah, this is whatever. All right, that'll do some good work. That's gonna be hard to play around. Um, hopefully we get a land and we can like 
pretend we're going to attack into it and they'll tap it and we can sheer drop it. But that's really the only really strong option. Oh, they're getting so many cards. They're probably going to lose. Now, they're not the best at double queuing. They're down to seven minutes. So they do... Oh, okay. So do we want Oblivion Strike the Blinding Drone or the Big Creature? Probably the Big Creature... Uh, of course, that leaves us not playing anything this turn, unfortunately. Yeah, let's go get rid of the Blinding Brown. And then I guess we can attack with that 3 3. Sure. Take our free damage while we can get it. If for some reason they attack with the Prophet of Distortion, I'd be happy to cheer drop it. And make another 3. No, we can't make another 3. Why? Oh, we can. We just. It'll tap all our mana again. Yeah, we could make a 6 6 if we wanted to. Which is probably what right, I would So we'll probably make the Mire a creature next time. You don't want to just have one 6 6? Um, they can bounce it. So, like, they have a very easy way to get rid of it. Yeah, let's not give them the chance to bounce it. But, you know, having 6 6 will fight with their creatures pretty well. Alright, so they're probably playing the Winsu's guy that can regenerate. 3, 4, 5, with the count. 6, 7. So this is game one, right? No, game two. We, we won, won game, game one. one. Yeah. And they're at six minutes? Hmm. Yeah, they're putting themselves in a really tight spot time-wise. Um, they did let us draw first, or play first, which was interesting. Clearly working out for them. Yeah, yeah, they knew this game was going to go long. Mm, yeah. I do think you're near the blinding drone was better, because we might be in a situation where we end up racing or something like that, and... Oh, perfect. Hmm. Now we can cheer drop. Hmm. Uh, that's pretty good too, actually. Now, yeah, but now we're not behind a billion cards. And if we draw one more mana, we'll make it bigger than the birthing hole. Right? Right, so we have a play next turn, and then we can always attack with a bunch of three ones if they ever attack with both at the birthing hole. Do we chump block Birthing Hulk? I think we do. Uh, does it have trample? Because if it has trample, don't chump block it. No, it doesn't. It's just okay. a 6-5. <laughs> In that case, yes. Forever. They didn't attack. Don't know why. Oh, they really don't want to take our two 3-3s three to the face. I probably would. Mm, uh, well, it's complicated. I mean, if they have some sort of mass pump spell, then they'll get a lot of value. Okay, so now we just play an endless one? No, we can always chump block the the thing. Yeah, so play the gruel. Do you want to save the swamp for when we want to get plus two? No, just play the swamp in case we play another. Next turn, because it gives something else plus one, doesn't it? All the it? other creatures. All the other creatures. You didn't say that when we were drafting it. I mean, it's fine. You didn't say that when we were drafting it at all. Yeah, that's what it That's is. like you probably should have saved the swamp. Well, you, you said another creature gets plus two plus Other seven. creatures. Ah, well, so that changes how I would go about things. Um, well, they will probably draw a swamp at some point. Yeah, and the other reason I like playing the lands is it makes our endless one bigger. Yeah. So now... Six. Mm, yeah, I'd really like to have a seven, seven. What happens... So it doesn't get bigger, right? No, it's always a three, four flying. Okay, so we'll swing it every turn no matter what. Yeah, it's also a good card for them to kill. Oh, their cards are huge now. Hmm, support six. Yeah, they have a... That's impressive. They have a seven five, a seven six. And a whole bunch of big tokens. Four, five, six, seven. Which is why they didn't attack. Oh, so one more land and we're back in it, though. Oh, they're probably swinging most of those right now, aren't they? I would. They could go longer. Take 10? I think we take 10. Ooh, I think we put an, a chump block in front of the... Unless... Unless we kill them on the backswing, so do the math. If we get... No, we don't. They block. Okay, so chump block. And... Uh, what? 3-3? Three, 3-4? Three, three, okay, they have one spell that blows us out. Right? So you shouldn't... Not you probably, Yeah. You should, probably shouldn't play into that one spell. 
Oh, their their hand is empty. Oh. Oh my goodness, Daniel. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why did you play that? We should have mathed real quick. It doesn't do enough damage. They have blockers. Oh, so you're just going to play the animal? They get two life whenever one of the creatures dies. Oh. Well, you really should have blocked that. I really should have. Yeah, let's play an 8-8. Eight, eight. All right. All right, so the other thing is the trick that they represented would give them an 8-8, eight, eight, so we can just block with an endless one and a core ally to kill the bring the Hulk for sure. Well, so they weren't representing anything. They had no cards in hand. Oh, right. I mean, we, we, that was a free block. It's true. Super free. I... Uh, I always pay attention to cards. Yeah, that. I mean, I can't see everything. Oh, they sacked it to gain two cards because they don't need the mana anymore. Because they don't want to die. We could have attacked with a 3-4. Didn't you attack with a 3-4? Oh, yeah, why didn't you attack with a 3-4? Alright, so now we double block 8-8 eight, eight, and 1-1. One, one. Oh, they're attacking all out. Oh... Uh, well, so we just we just block the six six to kill it, right? And then jump block the six the seven six, and block uh, one of their two twos. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. If they have a trick, then they just have a trick at this point. All right. So the other thing we can do is do we kill on attack back? We take six twelve. If we take 12, and they block our 8-8, eight, eight. no, we're not going to win that way, so yeah. Alright, so that blocks the 6-6, six, six. that chump blocks, and that kills the one that can tap for mana. Or all of them can tap for mana, alright? Yeah. Alright. And they get in for 4. They gain some life. They gain what? 4, 6 life? Yeah, they gain a lot of life. Okay, that's not very good, but it's better than drawing a land. Well, you know, lands are pretty good. They give our team plus one. All right, so now we just attack with the three, four flying. Yes. Uh, yeah. We got to hope that gets there. Well, we can hold back and just nope. block their cards and nope. watch them run out of time. Nope. They Hit have em. to win two games. Hit them. No, you don't like that? Counting on them to run out of time? They have Is that a good four plan? minutes. They have to kill us. They're not even close to killing okay, us. Okay, then do it. Just passes, pass, pass, pass. Well, like, they have to find a solution to kill us, and I don't think they're in an advantageous spot to do that. If they run out of Eldrazi Scions, then Birthing Hole can't do anything. And they're playing cards like Warden of Geometries, which are not going to get them out of the We'll play that, and then so we're actually trying to run them out of time. That's the weirdest thing. Three, four, five, six, seven. We, we don't, don't have great attacks, and we're better off playing defensively than offensively. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now, if we get an F6. ally, we can start winning. Like, there's not really much they're getting. That's six game. Okay. All right, now we're gonna F two because we want Sledge Crawler, which can get one, two, three, four, five, six. It can be a four, four. Can't you do it after you block? Yep. All right, now we can start draining. Now the onus is on them to kill us. We can do a bunch of damage whenever we want. We can drain them over the next few turns, and they have to find a way to win. Hmm. I think this is a good strategy. Yeah, I mean, it's not just trying to time them out. We're also trying to make them have relevant plays. This looks like a relevant play, though. Oh, it's their own endless one, sure. That won't end well. Why? We just double block and kill it. And then they can get through their 7 6 forever. Alright, be sure you get their. Yeah. Alright, so now we want to attack. We can kill nothing. We can make it a 9 9. We can make that a 
six five. <laughs> so we're dead. Dead. It's not, it's not we can right. attack them for we can do five damage. Well, we definitely want to play it, right? And then we want to pass. I think so. I mean, they attack with two big creatures. We can block here, chump here, make them get rid of two scions, then they can't regenerate right. it anymore. Yeah, so F6. Yeah, I guess we can have six here. We have the option to play Hogger Shop Shooter. We have the option to make our Sludge Crawler a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, if we draw land at any time... Well, we're almost to the point where we can... We're almost to the point where we can just draw a Swamp and kill them, aren't we? Yeah. Do you think we should block with the Sludge Crawler? Or land? Uh, I think we should just jump block with a Sludge Crawler. You think it's worse than the land at this point? Uh, you might be right. I actually think the Sludge Crawler is worse. Okay. Right, yeah. Just because there's a lot of things that use up our mana. No, we're not at 16 yet. Oh, right, because you gotta, you gotta drain them for two. Yeah. Respond, killer creature. Good, good move. Yep. All right. So One, does two, land kill five? They have five blockers. So they block our five biggest creatures. One or non-flying creatures. So one, two, three, four, five. They block all of our creatures except for one, except for two. The flying one and the two two. So I that won't kill. No, we can block with two flying. We can attack for seven. We can do nine this turn, which is not enough. One, two, three, four, five, eight. We can play a land. We should play a land. Why should we play a land? Because next turn we can activate twice and start killing their creatures. Okay. So we just pass our turn, right? I think we can attack the three, four this turn now. Okay, go for it. Yeah, we probably should have been doing that. No, it holds back so many other creatures. It makes their wide attack so bad. And they only need, like, a couple more s cards to make the white attack really good. Yeah, so as long as you drain them for two every turn, you're, you're fine. Now, what about... So, eventually, we're going to have to, like, send the Endless One out there, right? No. No? When we draw that turn... Land. Um, we drew a land. So, you uh... Well, so we could put... Oh, we could put 3-1... Uh, three, 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 and drain it for one, in front of it. Three, 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 one. Drain and then drain, it, and then minus one, minus one it. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. And then go ahead and do the ability. Oh, I guess you can do the ability after they cast something, right? Yeah. If they have a combat trick, they have a combat trick. In which case, we're in a lot of trouble. They do not. Nope, they did. Alright, uh, yep. Definitely do the ally thing when they go to the end phase. Yep, we drain for two. Now we're behind two lands. The uh, Hogger Shop Shooter plan's worse. But they don't have particularly good attacks anymore either. No. Well, they, they can't possibly play another game on two minutes. You can. Uh, they'd have to get insanely lucky. I think they should have used Clutch of Currents before. Yeah, to save the creature? Yeah. I would have used it on Endless One. Because we have less mana now. Alright, uh, so play the creature, then play the land, or not play the land? No. Why would we, we don't have a reason to play the land, do we? Well, if we draw, what, one more after that, we can activate it twice? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
it's nine. Oh, sure. so two more. We have to draw two more lands. Yeah, so that's two, fine. Yeah, whatever. Mm. Can attack with everything. If they attack with everything, we don't lose them, right? No. The eight eight on the seven six. The three four on the three three. The four four on the four two. Okay, oh wait. Put the four two on the four four. I think so. Right. Yeah. We put. Or, the, or can we take that one? The three three. We can take seven. Oh, so the four two is our win con though. So they the won't have any creatures left. Uh, they'll have. Okay, but neither will we, except for a day that has to block the other thing. Wait, what? How did our creature die? What? You two two? Or eight? Oh, our eight eight didn't die. Yeah, that's fine. We're way ahead. We have a three four flying and an eight eight, and they have a two two and a three four. That's a good point. But we're at six. Okay. Um. Let me just wait. Yeah. Like our, our swamp's better in our hand in case we get a gun wide. Ooh, I don't know. I think they might get there. They're what? Two attacks from getting there. So we have to block the eight eight on the the big one. We have to block that on the. I don't have to. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, they're three. There we go. All right. So that was our first round. Second round? First round? We won. That's this round one. Oh, man. Oh, that took some time. We the last people to finish. Yep. Ugh. Um, but yeah, I mean, near the end we were making decisions based on time, but they were so low that there's no way that they're going to be able to play in a minute and a half. That's, That's why they can see them. We just pushed them that point. And I mean, that. I'm not usually playing on time, but when you're double queuing, I'm very willing to play on time. Because you are using time as a resource, I will use time as a resource to win. Seems, seems fine. How close have we ever been to timing someone out when it wasn't someone double queuing? And the answer is almost no, never. I mean, we've actually timed out before once, right? It was a really inv involved game. Yeah, and, it was you know, a super involved. And they were close too. That was like a really big board stall. There was no reason that game should have been anywhere near time. We had like 19 minutes left. Or not, like, we had like 15 minutes left. Yeah. You know, they were just taking a lot of time. And when you're willing to do that, I'm willing to put you in positions that punish you for uh, double yep. queuing. So we did play correctly. Just stall it out. Yeah. Because the longer we stalled it out. And they were in a good board position. I mean, they had one more creature than us, but we had a 3 4 with a decent ability in flying and an 8 8. Like, what were they going to draw to win? That's a good point. Oh, well, you know. We had removal that was okay, left in our deck, and some synergies. We had more cohorts. We could have easily just widened the board out, stalled the game, then saved a swamp and played a swamp and swung for lethal. Yep. So if we uh, if we win one more, we actually pay for this draft uh, twice over. Yeah. Two and a half times over. Getting somewhere in this world, Brad. Getting somewhere in this world. Very slowly. Very slowly. Uh, we're still ahead from the other times that I did the other drafts and release events. You've put in a lot of money, though. I have, but I haven't put a lot of money in for a while. Magic's not a cheap game. Nope. But so we're no. a Mobius pick. We're trying to make it cheaper. Uh, we would like to play first, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if we would, but we'll try. Uh, seems keepable if we don't draw land, we lose. Uh really like this hand. You don't like that sand? What does it do? We don't have any other ally to go with this. We have a 2-2. Two, two. I mean, we have a bunch of three drops and two lands. That seems keepable. Does yeah. it not seem keepable to you? I just don't like it. It doesn't do a lot. I don't know if it's mulliganable, but it's very close. We need a land in the first two turns. I don't think that's too much to ask. Yeah. I mean, then we have relevant plays. We do. I'll probably start with the uh, Shadow Glider if they play any creatures. And if they don't play any creatures, the Shrieker. Yeah. Actually, probably just play the Shrieker either way, right? No. And then just Tar Snare or whatever? You don't think that's the best play? 
Is it just flyer? Yeah. Uh, followed by the chain mage, right? Maybe. Well, they can't attack if if we play that, and we're still attacking them for two. They can attack their 2-1 into our 4-2. Yeah, and then we attack for four back? I mean, they'll probably play some sort of creature to trade. If they don't play a creature with two power, I'd be surprised. Also, if we play the chain mage next turn, we can tar snare and then attack. That's true. That's pretty strong. I mean, we're probably playing the chain mage if we're not killing something. That's definitely true. We're probably just killing that. Is that the one that gets plus two plus two? Yeah. Yeah, so attack. Should we kill it before the landfall trigger in case they try to pump it? Yeah, we, we should just kill it right now if you're going to kill it. Yeah. Well, we could play a creature. I don't know. I really like killing their stuff now because... Um, it gets real bad later. We have two chain mages now, so like... If they stall at the board, we can just, you know, start playing stuff. We can use Kozilek like Shrieker to trade with one of their cards. Well, that guy just gets so big. Is it he the plus two, plus two one? I mean, no, he just makes our creatures not no, the other block. one. The landfall guy. Is he plus one or plus two? He's plus two, plus two. He attacks for four. Yeah, that that's pretty relevant. Yeah, yeah, I was definitely going to kill that. Hmm. I don't like that card, but only because it's on their side of the board. Uh, so I think you play the 4-2. Not the Shrieker? Well, because yeah. the 4-2 means that they won't attack with both of those cards, because then we'll attack them for more. Unless they play another creature. Six. I mean, they're ahead on the, the combat. So if they play another creature, we Tar Snare it, and then attack. If it's Tar Snareable, they also could have access to 5 mana. They could. I mean, it, it's not unreasonable to expect them to play increasingly more expensive cards That's as true. the deck goes on. We're not the aggressive... We're not the people that have the aggressive curve as much as they are in this situation. They're the one that's ahead on damage. They're the one that's playing cards turn ahead. It's a lot of crumbling vestiges. I would expect to see a lot of colorless effects, unless they just have the two. Mm, who knows? I like those cards. Hmm. Haste prowess. Nah. Eh. It's okay. So are they going to trade 6 for 6? I probably would. Well, they're ahead, so it would be really good. And let's assume they don't play another spell this turn. And if we draw a black mana... See? Oh, man. That was pretty good. Well-built deck there. Uh, I guess we'll just play that, alright? And then hit him for 2. They'll hit us for 3. What now? Their 3-2 has menace. I think we actually don't attack. I think we... Oh, we block that? We're at nine. Do we block the menace person as opposed to blocking the 1-3 with prowess? Actually, we just attack. I don't really want to block the 1-3. There's so many spells that blow me out. I'd rather just get hit for four. We're going to play the Tar Snare next turn to kill the 3-2. Man, this is a rough game right here. I was hoping to play the Tar Snare to stop their Storm Tracer. Uh, so I think you'd block the 1-3, because there aren't many things. Yep. Any, any spell? Any spell that pumps, yeah, I guess. No, any spell has prowess. Any spell that doesn't die, but it doesn't kill ours. It becomes a 2-powered card. How does it not oh, kill ours? This is a 3-5. Oh, you, you had a 3-5. It's flying. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so... Um, so we can't play both of those. So we're going to Tar Snare... The Minus guy. The or are we going to start Tar Snare the Flyer? And block. It's four damage. Um, I think we play the Zulaport Cut Mage, tra or the Shrieker, trading the Goblin here. They get in for... Four. Yeah, that's the best play. Are you sure? I think they won't attack if you don't attack. Why? And if, I think if you if you just... Okay, we'll try yours. I just think that this gives them a chance to widen their board out. I mean, then end of turn we just Tar Snare, but sure. I'm pretty sure they'll attack with all of their creatures. So we Tar Snare the one and... Wow, uh, man. Yeah, see, I think we should have played a creature. Not attack with anything. Yeah, you're probably right. Like, I'm 100... We're definitely dead. They're going to attack with everything. I don't know why we could have done this, but... 
well, then you should have said that instead of passing. Don't trust that I'm right. <laughs> I thought you had a plan, but it's just like... Well, I, I think, never expect <laughs> that Brad has a plan. I think, actually, we were dead no matter what we did. Were we? Yeah. But it's good to know that they're super aggressive. Yeah, because even if they didn't have that to play, they would have attacked with all of these creatures, and we would have been dead no matter what. Uh, I don't think we would have been dead. Yeah, we would have. Because, okay, if they didn't even... If we had the ability to block this creature right here... They do one, two, three, four, we, five, we six. We can Taurus Snare that one. What does that do? They do five here, five here, five here. They have five anyway. Wait, wait. Okay, when we block the three, three, we could have chump blocked and not died, but mm. we would have definitely lost the game where we chump blocked and we're okay. behind. Right? Yeah. Like, like All right, so it. what do we do? To make ourselves faster. Uh, we don't have cards to go faster. Okay. We could bring in Angelic Gift, but I don't like that. Um, that's really it. Okay, well, run it back. Hope for a better hand. Yeah, we don't really have a good deck against their deck. Yeah, so we do want to play first, right? Yes. Wow. All right. I would not have kept that. Because the relevant rules spell. Don't keep five landers. Um, there's literally no format I keep five landers in. There's a couple I keep five landers in. I mean, I might do it in Commander. Oh. Well, don't. <laughs> don't don't mess this up, Dan. D don't don't click through it. Sigh of relief from Brad. All right, hands are already looking better. It can't possibly look worse than five lands. It could be six lands. Uh, you you don't keep five landers, Dan. All right, here we go. Ooh, I'll trade. Creatures are much better, though. Yeah, but they're a fast deck. If we get rid of all their creatures, what can they do? That's a good point. What if we take two, hit them for three, and then Taurus Snare? Well, they have a 4-1 that makes creatures. makes more creatures as they keep doing stuff. What does it do? Because plus one, plus oh. Whenever they attack, they put a 1-1 one, one into play attacking. Oh. Well, I guess we do trade. No. Actually, I think we're going to go for the Translator and the stop that completely. Oh, they're not giving this option. They're just going to make it devoid and go really, really deep. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Let's attack. Alright, so we'll attack and then blow them out if they do anything. shenanigans -y. Yeah, we're going to just tar snare. So they've only played one creature and they've had three turns, so we're doing alright. Captain's Claws, I don't really like that much. I mean, it's it's fine with unblockability, but the thing about it is once you get a Kozlix Translator down, it's basically a bone song. Like, we're just going to kill the guy that's attacking. If the creature didn't have to attack, it'd be a much better card. Mm. Smart play. What do you do? Didn't equip. So we got to... Yeah. Why not? I mean, I guess we could have taken two and tried to tar snare a better card. Eh, probably not. Definitely. So you want to just get rid of that with the Oblivion Struck? Or do you want to... You want to attack first. Okay. Do you want to play a 3-5 and then... Oblivion strike that possibly, or block it, or whatever. What do you want to do? Uh, we can go ahead and. Uh, I think the translator it. opens up more possibilities because they probably got better creatures than that guy. That guy's good. He'll be a four-two menace that makes one ones. Uh, and we can't block him then, right? So we probably should have just oblivion strike him. Mm. Well, his one ones get killed instantly, right? Yeah. So. The thing I do like about translator is it opens us up to having seven mana next turn, so we can play oblivion strike and sharpshooter. Hmm. Which makes it a lot better. So block the 1-1? One, one. Yeah, it's the only creature we can block. If they have a boulder salvo, it's rough. But they Ooh, didn't play that. would be epic. They'd have to play two spells. And they could.
Alright, so now we can do that either way, right? Yeah. Oh, we, we were going to anyway. Alright, do All we right, attack so with attack six, or do we attack for three and keep this back to block? This. I think just attack for three. With our three five? Yeah. Oh, wait. No. Let's just wait till next turn. Okay, well, we can just hog a sharpshooter and kill that next turn, by the way, too. Yeah. That's why we should just wait. We should not take any damage. Because that's how they win. I think they're a little bit too all in. I think that early play of the slip through space to the Captain's Claw was too much. I wouldn't be running so many cards that do so little. I don't mind Captain's Claw. When they Claw. draw correctly, though, I mean, it crushed us. Yeah, I just don't think Captain's Claw is a card I like a lot. I like it with flyers. That's true. It'd be, it'd be okay in our deck. I don't like it as a two drop for sort of like um, surge enablers. I think almost assuredly next turn we're just going to eat their reckless, right? Nope. Ooh, rough. Not too rough. Mm, that's pretty rough. You want to jump? Yep. Well, wouldn't the damage race unless they play something that's important? They only have one card in hand. It's likely to be a land. They haven't missed any land drops. It's not like they had great cards or they wouldn't have played the Reckless Bushwhacker before combat. Or after combat. Point. Do you want to attack both or just one? Mm, just one, because they'll win quicker. They're attacking for four, we're attacking for six. And we're three behind. Well, we might be able to catch up. Yeah, let's go ahead and attack with both, actually. You sure? It closes out the game pretty quickly. All right, well, click them both, then, if you're going to attack both. Well, we could wait a turn and then attack with both. Uh, that's definitely worse, because they'll probably draw a creature. Alright, yeah, let's put them lower. I mean, they're not going to block. No, no, no. And if, and if we draw a creature, it may very well lock that creature out. And we can still attack. So they're going to hit us for four, and then they have another creature. That's the thing I didn't like about this. Captain's Claw grows, but... It grows, we mean. They get a 1 1 each time. The 1 1 stay. No? Turn against. Okay. Mm. So it is the best that we attacked. Yeah. But we couldn't have played around turn against anyway, like no. that. No. They're winning the race now. Mm, can't we just hold back our creature and still hit them for 3 in the air and then we're winning the race again? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I can we're go down to three, though, right? Four. We'll go down to two. All right, wait, wait. If they attack, we'll go down to two. If they have a trick, they win. Worth it. Whatever. Did you make it fly? Oh, no, you, you didn't, didn't have to make, have it make it fly. Wow, if we had had a trick there, we'd have won. We're not running tricks. Nope. They don't know we're not running tricks. No, they don't know. They just had to hope we weren't. I would attack with both if I was them. They have a lot of live draws from one damage. Like the haste prowess flying guy. They die on the max one. Unless they have two creatures. No, oh, unless they have one creature. That's a lot of mana. That, you know what that does? What? They drew it. Though they would have nice. Alright. Well, there we go. Alright, guys. This is a great draft. Um, you know... We died to the aggressive blue-red surge deck. It's a cool, powerful deck. Um, it's tricky to get together, but they seem to have it decently. I think that playing Captain's Claws is better when you have reasons to play two drops that you might not necessarily want to play at different times, so that's mm -hmm. a nice part to it. But we got that Thought Knots here, which is going to put us uh, ahead totally. All right, guys. Hope you pick out.